In this guide, I will break down Survival PvP Hunter as simple as possible to make it easier for hunters to make that jump into survival. It's the most unique and rewarding playstyle in Modern WoW, and you will be glad that you finally switched over. In this guide, we will go over why survival versus the other specs, races, abilities and rotation, talents, gear, your stats, enchants, what pet to use, and how to improve. So why survival versus the other specs? First, you get constant pressure. Bombs, Serpent Sting, and Coordinated Assault make it so you are always able to pressure opponents while you kite back during enemy bursts. And this also dispels the myth that Survival Hunter is only a melee spec. You get a good chunk of your damage coming from range abilities. And with 5 gap closers, the ability to slow enemies, and 3 ways to dispel slows and roots on yourself, Survival Hunters are always able to maintain constant pressure on opponents making it very hard for them to run away. This also makes for a very aggressive and fun playstyle. The second reason is survival's utility and control. Harpoon makes it so the enemy is rooted in place while you land an easy ice trap. Survival Hunters also get Sticky Tar Bomb, which is now a AoE disarm and makes it easy to fight into cleave comps, which has always been a weakness for Hunters. Hunters also get Mending Bandage, which is a complete counter to both Feral and Assassin Rogues, and also good for DKs. But most importantly, as a DPS class, Survival's Burst is probably the most rewarding burst out of all three specs. It feels great when you're able to connect Explosive Shot into 5 stack Mongoose Bites, and finishing players with a kill shot. The burst is so fast at times that it usually catches teams off guard. Now for races. For number one, I put Night Elves because of their passive shadow meld, which helps out against casters, giving you another tool to delay an incoming CC. And when timed correctly, shadow meld can make a Stormbolt, Psychic, Scream, and other hard CCs miss completely. Second, I put humans for their racial will to survive, which gives you a free stun trinket, allowing you to play other trinkets other than medallion. And I'll note that you do want to use the medallion for road comps because they could kill you in their CC. And for number three, for a horde, I would just always be orc because of their racial hardiness, decreasing stun effects by 20%, and their Blood Fury giving them a burst cooldown, and they also get a 1% increase in pet damage. I don't know how to juggle, but ever since I switched to survival, I always thought of its DPS rotation as juggling, because you constantly have a button to press and there's always a proc that comes up. These are ideal basic rotations, but note that you want to get comfortable with focus regeneration, cooldowns, and stacking mongoose bites, and the best way to practice is on practice dummies. For the opener, you want to use explosive shot into chakram, bomb, and serpent sting, and then you want to use your cooldown coordinated assault, prioritize kill shot off of cooldown, bomb off of cooldown, and use mongoose bite as a filter. The regular rotation goes by priority of mongoose bite, maintain your serpent sting for latent poison stacks, bomb, flanking strike, and kill command whenever you need focus. If you're just beginning, I would not complicate it more than that. Just again, focus on practicing that DPS rotation, building that muscle memory for what button to press during your DPS is probably the best thing to do starting out. There are a ton of Hunter, CC, and Utility spells. The best way to ease into it is to focus on using only a couple of them while in a BG. You'll start to get the hang of what situation you should use what ability. There's no reason to think you should memorize every ability all at once. You should take them in chunks. Aspect of the Turtle is our main defensive cooldown. You want to use this when you know you will die because the, your healer is CC'd with no trinket or cannot heal through all the incoming damage. Exhilaration is an instant heal. Roar of Sacrifice makes you immune to critical strikes. Great to use on an opener to help the healer. Especially good for fire mages during their combustion. Your pet will take 10% of the damage so make sure that you have men heal on your pet if he's close to dying. Master's Call removes roots and slows and makes you immune to them for 4 seconds. You can use this on yourself or teammates to help them get away from enemies. Mending Bandage instantly clears all bleeds, poisons, and diseases for yourself or teammates. Really good for Assassin Rogues, Feral Druids, or DKs. Feign Death with the PvP Talent Survival Tactics. It removes all magical effects and decreases incoming damage by 90% for 1.5 seconds. You should also be using this tactically. If there's a mage that's casting poly, you could feign death and it'll stop that, as well with any other cast that's going against you. 
Survival of the fittest decreases damage taken by 20%. Disengage removes roots and slows and throws you backwards, increasing movement speed when you land for 4 seconds. Aspect of the cheetah increases movement speed by 90% for 3 seconds and 30% after that for an additional 9 seconds. Sticky Tar Bomb now gives hunters a disarm as well as that slow, which makes it easier to fight cleave comps. Tranquilizing Shot removes one Enrage and one Magic effect from an enemy. Tranquilizing Darts, this is a PvP talent and when you successfully tranquilize Shot or kick a spell, it releases 8 darts at enemies which reduces the duration of a beneficial magic by 4 seconds. You should always use this when you are going up against a Restor Druid as it gets rid of their hots, although this is really good against casters and other healers as well. Chimeral Sting inflicts 3 stings for 3 seconds each, first slowing them by 90%, the second silencing them, third reducing damage and healing by 20%. This is good against casters and a good way to peel. Harpoon and Ice Trap. You want to use Harpoon to root enemy healers and land easy ice traps. I actually have a really great focus macro that I use to land my Harpoon ice traps, and that's in my Discord linked below. Scattershot incapacitates targets for 4 seconds. Great for peeling off DPS. This shares a CC diminishing return cooldown with ice trap, so be aware of that. Wing Clip reduces movement speed by 50%. Hunter's Mark, causing players to be seen when they go into stealth. Always try to land this on a stealthy before they are able to stealth. Sometimes you could catch them out at the beginning of matches. Intimidation is the Hunter's Stun, also a great way to land that freezing trap. And for all the macros I use for every single one of my abilities, you can find in my Discord which is again linked below. For the talent tree, I'll have my loadout in the description below but we'll go over the most important talents that are in that talent loadout. So first we go for a Concussive Shot, which replaces Wing Clip and makes Wing Clip ranged to make sure that you're always able to stay on top of enemies. Tar Trap, this along with Entrapment makes it so when you use Tar Trap, it roots all enemies that are in the Tar Trap, so you really want to be using this against melee enemies. Roar Sacrifice is now a talent in the talent tree, so we want to pick that up of course, because it's one of our best defensive spells especially in PvP. And down here, if you're gonna go up against two mages or two casters, Explosive Shot is probably the way to go there. Let's say you're going against two melee champions, I probably would drop Explosive Shot, get rid of their Arctic Bolas, and grab Steel Trap. It just makes it so you're able to kite out that off DPS way better and get them off of your teammate or your healer. But this is the basic. And for survival, we go for Wildfire Infusion, buffs your bombs, and a ton of the talents in here just increase your damage for your bombs. And with the four piece PvP set, it makes your bombs like a really important part of your rotation. And Coordinated Assault and Spearhead are also two gap closers, so be using those wisely. And so is Flanking Strike. And Aspect of the Eagle makes it so you can use your Mongoose Bites from range. So if someone's kiting you out, this is a good way to keep constant pressure on them. Again, the link for the loadout will be in the description below. And if you have any other questions on the talents, please feel free to come into the Discord or ask in the comments below. Would love to answer any questions. Before we get into the gear, I want to shout out Murloc.io. This is my favorite PvP resource because it collects data from the top hunters in every PvP bracket to show what they are using for talents, gear, stats, and their enchants. It also is for every single class. So if you want to know what the best in slot is for the current meta, murloc.io is the best place to find that. Being a beginner's guide, I'll make the gearing very simple. You want to prioritize getting the haste first conquest weapon. As a hunter, your biggest DPS upgrade is your weapon. For stats on your gear, you want to prioritize 30% versatility, haste, crit, and then mastery. Next, you want to prioritize the four set PvP gear. Try to get the helmet, shoulders, gloves, and legs for the four set. For the PvP off pieces, go for a haste first in every single slot. For trinket, I always run medallion and emblem for extra survivability, especially since I don't have best in slot gear. If you do have best in slot, then insignia of alacrity is the go-to with medallion. 
This being a beginner's guide, I will defer the best in slot crafting gear to murloc.io. You should definitely check out the best in slot gear that hunters use. There are a ton of craftable best in slot that you can farm or buy the mats for. Either get a leather worker or a jewel crafter to make them or use a crafting order. For enchants on the boots, you want Plains Runner's Breeze. For the belt, Shadowed Belt Clasp, Cloak, Writ of Speed, Chest, Waking Stats, Rings, Devotion of Versatility, and for the weapon, Sophic Devotion. For your pet, you want to use a Cunning Pet because they give you Pathfinding for 8% increased movement speed as well as Master's Call, which is the Hunter's Freedom. Specifically, you want to go with the Cunning Pets that have the ability Mortal Wounds, which decreases incoming healing by 50%. The three cunning pets that have mortal wounds are Hyena, Raptor, or Rodent. A lot of PvP hunters use the Skeleton Raptor because it is undead, making it unable to be polyed, sap, or hibernated. The best way to get better is to be comfortable with the survival rotation to maximize your damage. Maximizing damage will put you ahead of most other survival hunters. The second best way and more important for higher elos is learning how to survive longer in PvP by CC, kiting, and shutting down enemy bursts. Use target dummies to maximize your DPS. Use an add-on like details and DPS to target for 2 minutes at a time, which gets you enough time to go through your opener, cooldowns, and regular rotations. To learn how to survive in PvP, go into BGs and focus on not dying. Note what abilities you could have used to keep yourself from dying and add it to your playbook, one ability at a time. Over time, you will get used to your defensive and utility spells. To learn how to play against specific classes, go duel outside of Orgrimmar or outside of Goldshire of your alliance. Don't worry about winning or losing, just keep in mind what spells you could have used to stay alive. Start noticing enemy cooldowns and when to position or CC the enemy in a way that completely breaks their burst while saving your cooldowns. After a while you will start to get the feel for what you can do in every situation versus every class. And the last tip is to watch pro live streams and ask questions. Bikmex, Dylan, and Jellybeans are all very friendly streamers, and it helps that they're always on top of the PvP ladders. For making it this far into the video, and to celebrate the fact that I'm about to hit 1000 subs, I'm going to give away $15 Battle.net credit to two winners, enough to cover one month of WoW game time. The only requirement is to subscribe to this YouTube channel and join my Discord. Under the giveaway section, I will post this video, and all you have to do is give an emoji reaction to the video to enter the giveaway. I will be announcing the winner on Tuesday, September 5th in the Discord. Thanks for watching.